Hi friends. They will look at equilibrium, that is static equilibrium. Just want to solve a simple question. So if it's your first time coming across our YouTube channel, subscribe to it as we are going to have more videos coming. So today we have to look at this type of a question which involves the system of finding the horizontal component as well as the vertical including the tension in the lobe. If we try to look at this question, it clearly indicates a diagram which is there. So here the only thing that we need to concentrate on has to be how we can resolve some forces acting on the beam. The moment you hear something like a uniform beam actually it has its weight or rather mass appearing in its center. Now if we try to understand it fully, here we are going to use two different concepts. The concept of uh, the horizontal as well as the vertical forces including torques. Some other people are saying moments. So we try to get back a bit to the 12. We understand that there is a simple principle of moment which is says that and clockwise moment has to be equal to clockwise moment in its summation. Now if we try to analyze it by drawing it we are going to look at a certain diagram which looks like this. By the way, if they have indicated something like 3L over 4, starting from this point where P is, remember where the beam is hanging, we call it as a hinge. So at this point, you find that on the hinge, there are two forces that are going to be acting on this one. So starting from this point to where the, the, uh, the rope has been tied, we will see that we have a length of 3L over 4. By the way, the total length for this entire beam has to be L. Now, using a simple illustration by coming up with some forces acting on this beam as well as on the hinge, we are going to understand by resolving it into its component. Specifically, I'm, I'm trying to talk about this one. We start by resolving it into its component. Okay, let's get back a bit to the 12 as well also. So we are going to understand that Talk. If, we, if we try to talk about torque, it simply means the force that is acting at a certain point from the pivot. So always we produce a torque by having a certain distance from the, uh, the center of action or rather from the pivot. So in this case, we are going to understand it fully to say on the pivot we won't have torque. Why? Because always there is no displacement or rather distance. Same applies at this point. All the forces acting on this one, they won't have a torque or moment why because we don't have a distance from a certain point this has to be a zero torque so all the forces acting on this one they won't have torque but the forces that you are going to be having from this point to whichever part they must experience some torque why because they're going to be a distance remember if we talk of a torque which is denoted by this symbol we'll find that this has to be equated to something like force multiplied by distance in this case, the force that we are going to have at this point, or the forces that we are going to have at this point, I'll put it at this part, and then the distance has to be 3L over that. Now, based on the principle of moments, or rather torques, we understand that anti-clockwise torques has to be equal to clockwise torque. Let me start by displaying what we have on the free body diagram and the forces that we are going to be having. So this diagram indicates the forces that act at every point. The beam is having a weight of 600 as the, uh, the question has already displayed. We have to put it in the middle pointing downward. That's the weight. Then we also have an object at the end which is uh, accepting a weight of 800 newtons. Meaning that these two are going to be fa facing downward. So the distance from here up to that given part, we will understand it that it has to be L. Then the distance from this point to where the distance from this point to where this is, we are we've been told that it has to be 3L over 4. Now, same applies the distance from here up to where the weight is being experienced, it has to be half. Why? Because always the weight has to be experienced on the center of a beam. So we try to resolve every force. On the hinge, we are going to have the horizontal component. We're also going to have the uh, the vertical component on the part of the hinge. On this part, we are going to have this force being resolved into its components. We are trying to talk about the tension. 
So if you try to resolve the tension into its components, you have T sine 40 <coughs> as well as T cos 40. Now, based on a simple illustration, I said you have to use two concepts, a concept of moments as well as a concept of uh, the forces acting in different directions. So here, the summation of forces in all the directions or external forces has to add up to zero. Why? Because the object or rather the beam is not moving. So the forces that are moving upwards must always be equal to the forces moving downward. Same applies to the forces moving to the right hand side must always be equal to the forces acting to the left hand side. Let's start solving this question so that we understand what is it that they are trying to ask us to calculate for. So they are trying to ask us to calculate for the tension. We need to get the tension as well as the component. Now the components in this case they are trying to ask us in a different way by saying what would be the size of forces acting through the point P. Or what they mean is the components, the vertical component as well as the horizontal component which makes the, um, the forces on point P be at stable. Alright, now here we are going to use the principle of torques or say anti-clockwise torques must always be equal to the summation of clockwise torques. Okay, now what does it mean if you write it like this? You need to know what forces produce anti-clockwise torques and what forces produce clockwise torques. If you try to pull this force which is moving like this, remember for you to come up with a torque, you can't have a force which is making an angle. You need to make an angle of 90 degrees like this. That's when you experience a torque. So in this case, the component which is going to be making and clockwise torque has to be the one which is moving in this direction. I understand that this one, if you keep on pulling it, it will make the beam go in that direction. Hence, the same force which is located here must produce and clockwise torque. So I'll do this. I'll say force 1 multiplied by displacement or rather distance 1. You check, do we have any other force which is going to produce a torque also? In this case, we can't have another force. Why? Because on the hinge, always these forces, they don't produce a torque. Why? Because there is a zero displacement. But this one, it has a distance from this point to that point. Hence, it will, it will produce a torque. So on the left-hand side, I will only have one force producing a torque. I will go to my right-hand side. We have two forces that can produce torque. The one which is here and the one which is located somewhere there. I'll say F2 multiplied by D2 plus, if I come to this part, we are going to have the third force. I'll say F3 multiplied by D3. So where there is F1, you have to put the force which produces and clockwise torque. In this case, it has to be the component of the tension. So I'll say T sine 40. What distance from the um, pivot are you having? I think you've been told that we have a distance of 3L over 4, which is located somewhere there. You put it like the way it has been indicated in the question or rather on the diagram. So we are going to have, let me try to put it here, 3L over 4. I multiply, then I'll say equal to, I'll come on this part. I said the half of the entire length has to be L over 2Y because always the weight has to be experienced in the middle of the, uh, the uniform beam. So we are going to have L over 2, that is the distance, multiplied by, do we have the force? Yes. In this case, our force has to be the weight force. I'll write my 600. I'll say plus. If you come at the end, you find that we have this one, of which from the very point of the pivot to where it is located, we must have the total length, which is L. I'll say L multiplied by 800. As simple as that, you find that here we are going to come up with the tension that is being experienced in that point. Okay, now if we proceed, you find that this L, that L, including that one, this can be cancelled. So we are going to have uh, 3 over 4 T sine 40 equal to here. I think we are going to divide this by 2. You have 300. And you add it with 800. Alright. Now, based on a simple calculation that we can have, based on a simple calculation that we can have, you understand it fully that we are going to have 
this. Let me start with the left hand side. Uh, left hand side, I think we are going to have 3, sorry, 3 over 4. Then you say sine 40. Sine 40. Make sure that the calculator is in degrees. Sine 40, we are getting 0 0.482. So I will try to write 0 0.4, 0 0.48, I will say T. Why? Because we are interested in getting the value of tension equal to. Here on the right hand side, if you try to add, I think you are going to have 1100. Divide this by 0 0.482, even here, 0 0.482, you cancel that. Tension has to be equal to right so 1100 divided by 0 0.482 you'll find that you are getting your answer as 2282 newtons 2200 it has to be 2282 newtons this has to be the tension as simple as that meaning that you are done with the issue of torque you can just use torques on that very point you can just use torques on that very point now you have to come to the part of the forces acting on p the horizontal force as well as the vertical force how can you get the same two forces it becomes very simple for you to understand using the external forces concept how do you apply the same external forces component you have to make sure that the forces in the x-axis are balanced the forces in the y-axis are balanced so since we are dealing with the um, static equilibrium, I would, uh, I would like to use this thing. I'll say forces in X has to be equal to zero, as well as forces in Y has to be equal to zero. Remember, we are putting summation. So how many forces are in the X axis? If you check, we have the force on the hinge, the horizontal component on the hinge moving like this. And also the component from the tension which is going in that direction. So I'll say the one moving to the right hand side must be equal to the one which is moving to the left hand side. In this case, we are going to have the force on the hinge in X. It has to be equal to T cos 40. So if you try to continue with your calculation, you find that the force on the hinge in X will be equal to so what is your tension? I think it has to be 2,282 cos 40. And this is going to give us a certain horizontal force on the point P. So 2,282 cos 40. What answer are you getting? We are getting our answer as 1748 newtons. 1748 newtons. So I'll write my 174 eight newtons remember we don't have a negative force sometimes you might get a negative force in the y-axis but all what you have to do you write it in a form of positive the negative that you have actually simply means the force that is moving in the anti-clockwise i mean in the clockwise direction is bigger than the force that is moving uh, in the clockwise i mean in the anti-clockwise direction so in this case how many forces do you have that are moving in the y-axis you understand that we have this force and that force, this and that. In short, what forces do you have in the y-axis? The summation of forces in y moving upward and those going downward must be the same. So what we are going to do, I'll say the forces on the hinge in y plus the tension sine 40. This has to be equated to. If you try to add these two forces that are going downwards, you will find that you're going to get something like 1400 newton take this one to your right hand side for you to get the whole i mean the vertical component on the hinge in y so you're going to have 1400 okay minus t sine 40 meaning that the vertical component on the hinge actually it has to be as follows i'll just punch it direct i'll say 1400 minus what is your tension in this case it has to be 2282 so say sine 40 you close 
you are getting negative 65.6 now if you try to analyze it you find that you can't have a negative force why because the negative that you have there shows that the clockwise moment is greater than the anticlockwise moment that's why we are getting a negative answer let me try to write it in a simple way this has to give us 66 newtons as simple as that that's how you solve these two questions let me try to put a simple example so that you try it if you are able to understand what i'm from solving try to solve this one now <laughs> 